Okay, so in this video, I've got uh, a series of formulas here, and these are formulas of uh, of compounds which have which contain elements which have variable oxidation numbers. So if you look at this, it's got nitrogen, which is variable, copper, variable, iron, variable, copper, variable. Um, this one's got iron, which is variable, and this one has um, manganese, which is variable, at this MN. And if you, um, so I'm going to work through the, um, working out the systematic names for these. But before I do that, if you want, you guys can pause the video and try and work out the systematic names for these six. And before, before you go and pause, I, I want to let you know that this, just in case you don't know, this MNO, like if you have a formula, which has the, the formula M N M N x and then o x or mn something o something this ion and then it's got some sort of charge x minus these are just unknowns um you call this a manganate manganate ion manganate man -ganate. so you can imagine when you put this and this together what what it would be it's like say sulfate or nitrate so yeah So if you want, you can um, pause the video and see if you guys can uh, work out a systematic name for these six compounds. Okay, so this first one, KNO3, I can see that there's potassium here, oxygen here, and there's a nitrogen, and the nitrogen is going to be variable, whereas these two are not. And I know that potassium usually, it, potassium is in group one, so... Let me just scroll up. Yeah, potassium is in group one. So it's going to have an oxidation state in this particular case of uh, plus one. So potassium is going to have an oxidation state of plus one. Na uh, the oxygen, I'll leave the nitrogen for now, but I'll work out one for oxygen. Oxygen is going to be two minus. And since we've got three of them, it's going to be three times two minus, which is equal to six minus. So now we know that this compound needs to be neutral since there's no charge on it. So we 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 combine the plus one and minus six. So one minus six equals minus five. And so the overall charge of the potassium and oxygen part is minus five, and therefore the the charge of the nitrogen part must be uh, plus five plus five. And therefore, this being potassium nitrate, we need to um, say in the system systematic name that the nitrate has a charge of plus five. And the way I'll do this is, all right, potassium nitrate. And then at the end, I'll write this, the Roman numeral symbol for five, which is V. So potassium nitrate V. Okay, the next one, Cu2O. This is copper oxide. And this is a form of copper oxide which has um, two copper atoms in it. So to work out this one, um, oxygen is combined here. So it has an oxidation uh, number of minus two. And there's only one, so it's just minus two. And so the coppers, the two coppers must um, balance this out. So the overall oxidation numbers of both coppers would be... Uh, plus two and since there's two of them we need to divide this plus two by two so plus two divided by two equals plus one so therefore the charge the oxidation number of each individual copper atom here is plus one so we would represent this as copper i oxide okay moving on to the next one we've got fecl3 here iron chloride uh, FeCl3 is often used as catalysts in certain uh, chemical reactions. Uh, if you look at reactions involving uh, the molecule benzene, you might find that uh, there's some stuff about this. Anyway, FeCl3. So Cl3, um, as you may know, is a group 7 element. Group 7. And so chlorine... Where is it there is chlorine is going to have a charge of minus one since it's it's giving its 
uh, it's, it's, it's being greedy with the electrons. So we've got minus one and we've got three chlorine atoms. So it's going to be minus one times three. And that gives us minus three. And so to balance this, this single iron atom is going to have a charge of plus three, which brings this to zero. So this is going to be iron I, 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 so to, to represent that plus three, I, I, I chloride. And the next one, CuO, CuO copper oxide is gonna, uh, oxygen is gonna be two minus, and copper is gonna balance that out with two plus. So we would say that this is copper, uh, let me change the color, copper, uh green copper this looks like is it green or what's this weird color copper ii oxide okay so fecl3 and kmno4 so for the for the k for the fecl3 um chlorine is gonna be like the chlorine here and it's gonna have an oxidation number of minus one per chlorine atom so altogether that's going to be minus one times two which is minus two and to balance that out the iron needs a charge of plus two and therefore the for the systematic name would be iron i i chloride so iron i i chloride Okay, so now this one, KMNO4. And as I said before, this, this um, MN part is manganate. So we have the K, and that's going to be pota no, yeah, potassium. And the potassium is going to have an... It's very, oxidation state is not very variable, so... Yeah, and the oxygen is going to be its usual op oxidation uh, state. This is going to be generous. This is going to be greedy with electrons. Um, so oxygen, we've got minus two, multiply that by four. And here we've got potassium and we multiply that by, oh well, no, we don't need to multiply that by anything, minus one. And so minus two times four, uh, minus eight. Oh yeah, sorry, plus one, plus one. Minus, minus, plus one minus eight is minus seven. And so to balance this out, we've got this, this manganese atom. So we need plus seven. And so we would call this, let me go back to that color, potassium manganate, manganate. This is an interesting word, potassium manganate. And this would have a I, V, V, I, I. Yeah, so yeah, this is how we would um, work out systematic names for, for those compounds. I hope this was helpful. Yeah.